What's up, everybody? You already know who it is. It's Drip God Daryl, and I'm back to you guys with another. Hey. So, in today's video, I just want to talk about five lessons I learned in corporate America. Now, keep in mind, when it does come to corporate America, or what I define as corporate America, I define it as more so white collar jobs, be it the office workers, the uh, remote workers, the people who are in jobs such as cybersecurity, IT, things like that. Um, so that's what I consider a corporate worker, a person who has a work in the office is more so, um, you know, just sitting down majority of the day, not very physical. So that's what I consider a corporate worker. But to get to the topic, man, Hey man, five lessons I learned in corporate America. The number one lesson I learned in corporate America is loyalty gets you nowhere. Now, I preach this for any job that you should always be looking for better opportunities, be it if you're in corporate America or if you are working a blue collar job, whatever. You should always be looking for other job opportunities that can further your growth, be it the position that you are working in. So let's say that, let's just use my uh, field. Let's say that I am an insurance adjuster. You see a job that's to be a manager or a team lead. You should be looking at opportunities like that. Or if it ain't about the actual position, it should be about the money. You know, if it's paying you an extra 10K, extra 20K, you should always be looking for opportunities like that to further your resume, to further your growth in general in whatever field you are in. But just to get to the actual uh, topic, topic number one, loyalty gets you nowhere. Um, it, it really doesn't. It really doesn't, man. I'll give you guys a quick story, man. So as you guys know, if y'all been really tuned in to my most recent videos, I told you guys how my company it is actually getting bought out. And with that company getting bought out and no longer um, existing soon, it's been a lot of people, one specific person I know who's been working there for 15 years. And with her working there for 15 years, her job title is literally the same position as mine. She more than likely makes the same amount of money as me. And you think about that and you really think damn she spent 15 years of her life here and now number one this company is no longer going to exist no more number two she ain't getting the severance package once again she ain't getting the severance package after 15 years of building this company up and number three the dude who only was working there for like a year or two is making the same amount of money as the person who's been there, there the last 15 years. So that just goes to show that loyalty gets you nowhere. You could invest so much time into a company and they could let you go and not give you a severance package, not give you nothing. You will have nothing to show for it. They'll hire somebody who probably only has one year, two years of experience in that field and they'll be in the same position as you even though you done spent 15 years of blood, sweat, and tears trying to build this company up. So number one, loyalty gets you nowhere when it comes to these companies. Always be looking out for other opportunities to further your growth, be it the job title or be it monetary gain. Simple as that, simple as that. Now, number two, the second thing that I did learn when it comes to the corporate America market and just working in corporate America is that you have to be a wolf at the negotiation table. Now, I'm going to continue my story. Like I said, the company that I'm currently working for, they are getting absorbed into another company. So the company I'm working for right now will no longer exist within the next week or two. And with that being said, that gives rise to a new job opportunity. That new company will be interviewing workers from the company that they are absorbing. And with that being said, that gave me an opportunity to negotiate my salary. And like I said, at that negotiation table, you got to be a wolf, man. 
you got to be a wolf. I'll just keep it pretty, you know, I'll be pretty, um, you know, just more so not vulnerable, but I'll give you guys more of a look into exactly what went on. So during my little meeting with, you know, the higher up CEO, he pretty much tried, well, she pretty much tried to say that, oh, we're just going to transport all of, you know, your salary, the people you work under, this, that, and the third, all that will just be transferred to our new company. And me, because I'm a wolf at the negotiation table, I had to check. I said, hey, excuse me, ma'am, but I do have some other job opportunities. I do have a job offer from Blank Company, and they're offering me 10K more than what you guys are offering me. And it was a bluff. It was a bluff on my end, but at the same time, you got to be a wolf at that negotiation table. A lot of these companies, they will not pay you your worth. You think you're worth 70K? They'll pay you 60K. You think you're worth 80K? They'll pay you 50K. And due to that, you got to always try to negotiate your salary, man. Any new company that you start working for, you need to be negotiating your salary. And when it comes to negotiating your salary, you always want to highball. You want you always want to highball. Let's say that you making 70k at your current job, you have a job opportunity at this new job and the amount of money you want is a 10k increase. You want 80k. When you do that negotiation, when you go in for that interview, you need to, you know, you need to highball. You need you need to tell them I need 85K, I need 90K. And the reason I say that is not to, you know, talk your way out of a situation. It's to talk you into a situation. Like I said, a lot of these companies, they lowball you with these offers. A lot of these companies, they could pay you 10K more than the initial offer. And one thing that I always heard growing up is that closed mouths don't get fed. You won't know if that company it will pay you that salary that you want unless you actually ask them, unless you actually try to negotiate with them. So that's number two. Sorry if I was long-winded on that one, but it's very important, man. When you in corporate America, you need to be trying to negotiate. You need to be a wolf at that negotiation table, man. These companies do not really care about you. So you need to care about yourself and try to get the most bang for your motherfucking buck, the most money for your work, period. Now, at number three, the third thing that I learned in corporate America is that white collar jobs have less job security than blue collar jobs. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, when it comes to white collar jobs, you may have on average have a higher salary than a blue collar worker, but the thing that really stands out between blue collar work and white collar work is that with blue collar work, you tend to have a trade. Yeah, it may be physical, but you tend to have a trade. For example, let's say the truck drivers, you have to you may it may be physical, but that's an actual trade that will give you more job security compared to the dude who in the office just typing, a data entry dude or something like that, that's just typing, you know? Electrician, plumber, all those, those are trades, those are blue collar jobs, and those are jobs where you can always bounce back, man. Think about it. The people who were in cybersecurity, the people who were in IT, a lot of them have been laid off and been looking for jobs for six months to a year, still looking for jobs. And that's because although the salary is high in that specific field, it, do, it isn't necessarily a trade. So with it not necessarily being a trade, the job security just isn't there. Simple as that. The job security just isn't there. There isn't an abundance or need of millions of people doing that certain you know, a uh, job compared to an actual trade job such as an electrician or a plumber. It's millions of people who need that. Simple as that. It's literally millions of people who need that compared to the data entry worker or, you know, the IT specialist. 
Yeah, people need those, but not like the plumber, not like the electrician. So that's number three. At number four, the fourth thing I learned um, in corporate America is that gossip travels fast. Now, the difference between this and a blue collar job is that when you work in corporate America, most of the time you are in an office and what you've been in an office, you have opportunity to, to just talk most of the time in corporate jobs and you know white collar jobs you just on a computer you on the phone and which you just sitting down being on the computer being on the phone not really being too mobile that gives rise to gossip it, um gossip literally spreads way quicker um at a blue collar job because you're active be it you a truck driver be it you a factory worker Gossip doesn't spread as fast because you active. You trying to do this. You trying to do that. You moving around. So you don't really have time to just sit down and gossip with other people. You don't have time to just, you know, talk to other people. So that's number four, man. Gossip travels much faster in corporate America in a white collar job than it does in a blue collar job just because there's more room for opportunity since everyone is just sitting down. You seeing all these people all day compared to a blue collar job where you're moving around. You're more so busy. Uh, and at number five, the final thing I learned about corporate America is that there is less opportunity to become your own boss when you work in corporate America. Once again, I'll give you guys an example. Let's say you are in corporate America. Most of the time, you don't gain those certain trades. Once again, once, once again, you don't gain those certain trades that can give you opportunity and give you value in the uh, work marketplace. Now, what do I mean by that? You've heard of plenty, plenty, plenty of, you know, owner operators when it comes to trucking. When it comes to electricians, you have family-owned businesses with that. Plumbers, family-owned businesses. So you see time and time again, when it comes to more so blue-collar jobs, that there are there is plenty of opportunity to become your own boss. Now, when it comes to the corporate sector, it ain't necessarily the case, man. You just get a pretty big salary, but overall, it's not like you could really start your own company or or just you know gain the knowledge to start your own cor company in a corporate sector when it comes to the blue collar sector you gain that knowledge you you learn the trade to actually become your own boss so those are the five things that i did learn when it came to working in corporate america number one loyalty gets you nowhere number two be a wolf at the negotiation table. Number three is white collar jobs have less job security than blue collar jobs. Number four is gossip spreads faster in the office. And number five is there is less opportunity to become your own boss in corporate America. But if you enjoyed this video, y'all already know what to do. Like the video, comment on the video, subscribe to the motherfucking channel. Turn on notifications and all that good stuff and I'm out. Peace.